The battle tower is where hopes and dreams go to die. The strategy on display there is so beyond human comprehension, you will realize that you were never even a player to begin with. So maybe we can check out the movesets, decipher the language of the gods, and become better players for it. Or at least have a good time. So if you end up enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and comment your favorite moveset down below. So in the description, I'm going to have the Google Doc with all this. It's kind of impossible to go through all this, and it's also impressive. People at Game Freak made this. I don't know how large the battle team is. I don't know how many people were just sitting there labbing crazy movesets, some useless, some surprisingly good. Why is Crocoon in the battle tower? I'm just a child and I want to get a focus sash. You know, it's like some of these things are just insane. Perfect IVs, max EVs, competitive movesets. Let's go and break it down, and like I said, if you enjoy, please like and share. So, this Ampharos is something I encountered on my way to unlocking the Master Class. So, Master Class is when you hit a completely different level, and before then, you just find some weird, incomprehensible stuff. Ampharos. Poison self. Goes to sleep. Refuses to elaborate further. Dies. It's a mild nature, so plus special attack. Only knows physical move. Minus defense with EV, with EVs in defense. Also, not perfect uh, 252, 252, or 508 EV spread because we're, you know, we're in the easy mode of the battle tower. And also at level 50, I don't even know, like, if the. Actually, yeah, okay, these are optimal EVs at level 50. I'd find it funny if, like, Game Freak slipped up on their own game or Ilka Studios, but it's the Battle Tower, so it'd be Game Freak, anyways, for most of these. If, if they slipped up and they don't have even, like, effective EVs at level 50. But it's been a week, and I'm still trying to figure out what the plan was. Yeah, uploaded six days ago, and the stream was the day before or the day before that, so. It, why Thunder Wave, but fling to toxic the opponent, but the rest stall, but you're toxic, but you're not, but you're... I, I don't know. Let's get into some Master Tier movesets, because again, this is where we start getting into some really crazy stuff. So, there's an Ambipom out there, and also there's multiple movesets for different Pokemon. Some Pokemon have like six movesets. So you don't even know what you're going to run into until it's too late. Like, you, you could be sitting there looking at, like, oh, I got a plan. And that just completely throws this wacky moveset you can't even predict or begin to understand. So, this Ambipom is running around. Jolly Nature, Max Speed, Max Attack, Makes Sense, Razor Fang, Fake Out, Last Resort. But, that's not it. It also has the Fury Swipes. And that's it. A three-move, Last Resort, Ambipom, with the Skill Link... Razor Fang. And I don't even hate it. Like that when you start getting into some of these movesets, no matter how stupid they look, you could you can see a strategy here. And I'm contemplating if this beats out the life orb strat, because if you go fake out, max amount of fury swipes with stab skill link, that's that's a good amount of damage. And then I don't remember what the numbers are exactly on the Chinchino, but isn't it like 42, 43% chance to flinch? while also having one of the highest speeds in Gen 4, because 115 is nuts. It's like, fake out Fury Swipes might be a KO, and if it isn't, 42% chance to um, KO, or not KO, flinch, and then they die to the last resort. And then you just have last resort, and for anything that doesn't get tapped by last resort, you go Fury Swipes, 42% chance to flinch, last resort KO. So, fake out Fury Swipes, last resort, KO combo, Fury Swipes, last resort, KO combo, on high flinch chance. Like I said, it's stupid, and I don't even hate it. Um, next up, good luck if you ever see this. Also, why? What does Game Freak know about tank Pokemon that we don't know? Because there's multiple Pokemon that have max hit points, max speed spreads on the Battle Tower, and you've probably lost to one at some point. So we got Bright Powder, just 10% chance you lose the game. Sub, Roost, Mind Reader Sheer Cold. So of course you're going to find the Mind Reader Sheer Cold. Like, that's not unusual like humans run that and finding something that filthy in the battle tower all right but it's the mind reader sheer cold with the sub added in and the bright powder that's that's on another level of scummy i run minimized baton pass drift blim and even i don't want to go near this 
but just kind of pray that your sweeper Pokemon doesn't get cheesed by some other moveset, and then you get outsped by the 85 speed timid Articuno. It does have pressure, so no Snowcloak shenanigans, which would be hilarious, because there's just random hail icy rock Pokemon out there too. So if, like, if there was just a lingering hail RNG teamed into the Articuno Snowcloak, your day is over. But I also see this being pretty nasty with pressure, because that could just add up. If you can't one-shot the Articuno, you're actually in trouble. Uh, next up, we have Glalie, Moody, Sheer Cold, Rest, Sleep, Talk, Double Team, and once again. What do the Game Freak Battle Planners know that we don't know? And even then, we start getting into this, guys. Morimoto was the battle lead for Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I believe Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, like, Morimoto is the battle dude for Pokemon and he worked on Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl. Also, Masuda was the director, so this isn't like, oh man, you can't just pass off Pokemon to some other studio, even though the whole Bring Back National Dex hate was like, oh man, Game Freak can't be trusted with Pokemon anymore. But then, like, you see a lot of people in Game Freak for Ilka. It's a mess, and no one knows what they're talking about, all right? So just stop talking about the devs. Y'all are just super uninformed. Either way, we start breaking down. It's like, okay, so, how, like, Morimoto's behind this, maybe, or his team, or I don't know, but either way... If I say Game Freak shenanigans, it's actually accurate because even if, regardless of Ilka. So, I mean, like, what happens here? You go double team, take a hit, bulky because hit points, get a speed boost? I don't know. Go up against just a slow Pokemon? Like, an uninvested 90? Like, what happens? I don't know. The, the speed tier... Speed tiers aren't meant for this. Speed tiers aren't meant for tiered tank Pokemon 80 max hit point speed shenanigans. Timid sometimes. Leftovers, double team... Moody proc, who knows what's going to happen. Um, unfortunately, we do have the Moody nerf for the accuracy evasion. So, I mean, you could have just gone, like, double team, free minimize in between the turn, rest talk, sheer cold, and the sheer cold nerf also hurting this. So, like, this was even nastier before the Moody nerf and the sheer cold nerf, making it, like, only work with ice type and also making ice type Pokemon immune. But, like, that's just, that's just mean. That's, that's cruel. Oh, by the way, there's just more of these running around. So... Unless you've looked at the dock, and unless it's actually, like, visible right here, or I, I showed it at some point in the video, you will never guess the item on this Glalie. So we got Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Water Pulse Safeguard, Flat 80s, which is actually, like, not great, but if you go, like, full tank investment, it can survive, like, two hits, so it's a three-hit KO Pokemon. But, like, the 80 speed's kind of trash. Timid Nature, so outspeeds, Special Attack Oriented, we see that on this. Moody. Safeguard, no protect, like no protect moody shenanigans. Item. Scarf? Well, I, I mean, Scarf isn't crazy. Uh, Salak Berry? I can see Salak Berry working here, because like maybe you just tank out into it. No. Scope ones. Are we playing Pokemon Unite? Like, when I saw that, my brain just, like, crossed the wires. I was like, oh, yeah, Scopelands would be viable on Glalie and Pokemon. No! It's not Pokemon Unite! Why? It what? You don't raise crit on Moody? <laughs> I t There's no, like, focus energy. This is just, I have a 1 in 8 chance to crit my 80 special attack water pulse. And I exist. That's a real move set, guys. Suicune. Crocoon. How and why. Now, there's a couple of ideas behind Crocoon. Like, I think the true Crocoon is Rest, Sleep, Talk, Calm Mind, Ice Beam. Uh, technically, you can go Scald, but Rain Dish and Water Absorb and, like, you know, just... That doesn't really go anywhere. I don't like that, but I like this a lot. Calm Mind, Chesto, Resto. That's that's a modified Crocoon. Either way, why is this why is this my children's game? Why am I going up against a legendary Pokemon that is using one of the filthiest strategies to ever exist in the history of Pokemon? This goes all the way back into competitive. This is this is when people were just like coming up with strategy and this is one that stuck around because like how do you break it? You have a 100 hit point, 100 defense, bold nature Pokemon. So I mean like you, you, it's like a 3 hit KO on physical no matter what you do. Maybe 4 hit KO. It's got a calm mind. Now in the modern, more modern Pokemon, like this existed before Scald and it still worked. So you're going for that Scald, 30% chance to burn. And now that, that's just like stacking into the defenses even better. Or you just call mind, and now you have a 100 hit point double special defense Pokemon that also just has decent special attack uninvested. Four speed, splashing the four speed for the creep. Why, Game Freak? You're messed up. 
Um, I don't know if inner focus does anything or if it has inner focus. I stopped. I, the move set's all that matters at that point. Um, yeah, then Chesto Resto. So you can't beat this. You're not going to just have something that two hit KOs a Suicune on deck when they manually switch in the revenge on the battle tower. It's going to set up and it's going to start doing things and we just saw it ruin my life. So yeah, that'll happen. Really the only way that this fails is if the AI gets greedy or doesn't play on like the highest IQ or maybe it just wants to give you a chance and then bust out the other one or two Pokemon on the team that just wreck you even harder. But I mean like this is there. Also guys, there's um a calm one out there so it's this again you don't even know what to predict there's a full special defense tank and then there's also just physical into calm mind crocoon out there you never stood a chance you weren't playing the game we can also talk about minimize strategy for a bit so we got citrus berry clefable calm mind bold unaware it, it's clefable like this is again it's a competitive clefable one of the nastiest, dankest Pokemon to ever exist is just in the game. If you run into this, you are pretty much playing a real player. Like, this is top ladder shenanigans in the battle power. Uh, battle power. Battle tower. I just want five battle points. Please, I don't even have my power items. Masuda, why? Um, so yeah, you come in. It, it does minimize. It does calm mind. It's unkillable physically unless you have just, like, poison physical or steel stab physical on deck. It gets set up. Minimize makes it even more hateful. Moonblast happens, and then or moonlight happens, then moonblast. Um, without Ferrothorn, does it need the flamethrower? Does it need the ice beam? I tacked ice beam onto mine because I didn't want to be this, but I mean, I think this is just optimal. I think that's just the best Clefable. You can't stop it. You can't undo any of this damage, and that's that's just one of the nastiest things. Also, there's a Baton Pass Minimize Drift Blim out there with the Strength Sap. So incorporating the new broken strength sap into the drift blim on the battle tower, you run into this, you're gonna have a bad time. No stockpile though. Disappointed. Now, Morimoto is my favorite uh developer at Game Freak because he was the director of Pokemon Soul Silver, the best game like the best Pokemon games ever. And then we got this. So I mean like Willow Wisp, I can still see the plan here. Also, it is unburdened, not aftermath. That's just like the default. So Citrus Berry Unburden, you Will-O-Wisp, and then you effectively just cut their attack, which is has value inside of, like, stockpile effectiveness. And then it gets some minimizes. It eventually baton passes when it's scared and does, like, the damage count. Like, also the Battle Tower cheats. It predicts your moves sometimes because the AI just wants to get that advantage against you. So it does the calculations, like, oh, we lose this, baton pass into the most optimal Pokemon and win. So, yeah, um, there's a baton pass minimize. When I did my uh, Drift Blim strategy... People are like, oh yeah, it's like Flinch Drift Blim. No, 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 this is Verlissify's Drift Blim. I was running Minimize Baton Pass back in Gen 4 before no one else. And now it's now it's kind of getting around and now it's spooky. And now you'll just get your life ruined on the Battle Tower. Please, I just want a mint. Um, this Kangaskhan I thought was cute, man. This is this is one of the cooler sets. But as you can see, there's, there's also just like standard things. Endure Boost Berry. That's just a common strat that splashes onto any Pokemon. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, and I guess some Pokemon really get to run away with it. So, Kangaskhan, 90 speed. Doesn't meet, need Mega to be viable, I guess. And then 90 speed, plus one. That's actually some pretty, pretty strong outspeeding. Uh, you really just have to worry about Scarf Chomp at that point. But yeah, Endure, one health. Reversal, 200 base power move. Even though it's non-stab, that's still stronger than anything it's got. Crunch, super effective. Earthquake coverage. I think that's perfect coverage. So, you have the speedy getting to sweeper kangaskhan that has perfect coverage that's kind of cool also you don't just go straight in during the salak berry kangaskhan's a fat fat pokemon 105 on the 80s that's kind of why we learned that a uh, mega kangaskhan was so filthy because like oh we can't we can't out fat the mega kangaskhan so it just eats hits while setting up and getting even scarier so it's not like there's no there's no revenge to this pokemon so i mean like the kangaskhan can just come in Soften you up on a crunch or an earthquake, then endure Salak Berry. So, like, yeah, take a hit, earthquake, endure Salak Berry, now outspeed you, reversal KO, or double earthquake KO. And then, depending on, like, what else is going on, it's got some responses. So, I mean, this is a 1 plus Pokemon. Randomly on the battle tower, with a cool endure boost berry just chilling there. Like, this Kangaskhan shows up, and it's it's pretty cool. That's that's a nifty Pokemon. Um, Star Raptor. What is the star raptor running so hint it is intimidate over the reckless jolly nature 100 speed maxed out choice scarf 252 attack here's the move set boys 
Brave Bird. Nah, I'm just kidding with you guys. It's Final Gambit. It's Final Gambit. U turn. That's it. Much like the Ambipom that's missing move slots, the Star Raptor is either here to do the internal damage count. Wait, actually, it might not even be Max Attack. I might, I might just be tripping. I might have read it wrong. Because you need the health for the final gambit. It's actually 252 attack. Okay. And this is also the only final gambit in the battle tower. Okay. My squishy brain cannot begin to understand. So, I mean, maybe it... it just, I don't... I don't know. This is what you want to do. But apparently... The, the AI knows better than us. Yeah, so it's like unfavorable, U-turn, intimidate. Favorable, KO. Imagine this. I'm, like, Final Gambit is a winning play on that recoil, right? Like, if it's, if it's the last Pokemon, it's not like Destiny Bond. It's not like any of that weird stuff. Final Gambit is one Pokemon each. You're at 99 wins in the Battle Tower. You're going for your 100 streak. Final Gambit takes it out technically counts as you getting KO'd first and then the hit points drop I think I need to look at the tape fortunately I had fun in Pokemon Sword and Shield we can take a look at the tape so yeah my my plan was battle spot 2v2s not even 3v3s oh Excelgor faints first ah okay so yeah even though the health health goes down the game plays it like that all right imagine the battle tower inting you a win that would be nuts. So that's why I mean, like, some of this stuff on the Battle Tower is just... is just something else, my dudes. This is here. This is here to steal your win streak. I never got, like, to 100 in the original Diamond and Pearl Battle Tower. Oh, did I try? Oh, did I waste hundreds of hours of my delicate childhood just to have my highest win streak? It was low 90s. Every time I retell the story, it's a different number because I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh man, I'm almost there, guys. It was like 92 or 93. And then Glass Score comes in. This wasn't the exact move set, but it was just like, I ran bulky Pokemon. The first thing that happened was my Snorlax got guillotined. The next thing that happened was my Gastrodon got guillotined. The next thing that happened, maybe my Scizor, I think. I don't remember. It got guillotined. Maybe it was my Typhlosion. I don't know. Um... I, I just remember three guillotines in a row landed, and then I gave up on the black card. Now, Glass Score is even filthier because it's got Poison Heal. So it comes in, protect, sub, Poison to Heal, protect. If you can't KO it, you just lose the game. And then Earthquake and Guillotine, and then it also has the hacks, so everything is five times more accurate in the Battle Tower, and you're just going to lose. There is no mercy. In the battle tower this you hit this you're turned off pokemon forever like this is why there's so many casuals out there this is why everyone's like supporting cheating and hacking because they just don't like how unfair the world is and they feel like they need to undo all that is wrong them by wronging others and being scumbags i don't know is this what hurt you all the cheaters out there all the people that glitched and cloned and duped is this what hurt you I feel like this is this this is the answer, isn't it? It's okay. And oh, I oh yeah, that's right. I was like I was like, why is Gyarados here? This Gyarados move set isn't on the battle tower. But going back to this glass score, why does it have one hundred and why is it okay? Why why is this a jolly glass score? Why does it have one hundred and fifty six EVs in speed? Because it outspeeds Gyarados. It's built to outspeed Gyarados. Like, it's a little overbuilt out, Speed Gyarados, I guess. But, I mean... Wait, why did those numbers change? What, wait, where is this going? Okay, yeah. Also, that was weird. It showed 148, and now it's 147, and we have 8 remaining... Okay, maybe this is just bugged a bit. One second. S showdown's messy. There we go. It worked this, this time. We got our 148 back. I don't know. It, are, is, is Game Freak worried that something's going to speed creep, creep the 256? But, yeah, like... Not, not only does this cover 80 base speed Pokemon, this covers 81 base speed Pokemon. This actually makes me wonder, is there an 82 base speed Pokemon that no one knows about in this game? Oh, wait, we got it. It's, I always sort it wrong. I always click it too many times. 82. Gubbite. Magvi. Magmortar. 
I don't think the speed creeps the Magmordar. There's some there's some weird it's it speed ties the Magmordar. So Glasscore's got some deep damage calculation we can't even begin to comprehend. It's where speed tying the Magmordar is as optimal as tanking whatever a 100 defense Glasscore wants to tank. And it doesn't matter anyways, because you're going to get hacked out on the guillotines and have no chance of breaking the Poison Heal sub-protect. So, those are the movesets I have found. Um, I haven't done, like, like, that was just glancing. That was just me, that was like, that was whatever caught my eye. That was just me kind of going, what the? And then that. So, comment down below. I want to know what you can find in this, because there's hundreds. This is all Master. This is all Master Battle Tower. It keeps on going. So, yeah, Master Class... And then there's also the gym leader, so we go from 470 to over a thousand. And that's also just over a thousand in general. How many development hours were spent? Because, like, I have an existential thing. Like, I, my career is making a moveset for every Pokemon. And that's years of content. Now, I could probably just, you know, if I just had to make movesets nonstop and not publish them or anything, I could probably whip this out in a while. But, I mean, that's still how many hours to make all this because some of these look like they were just randomly mashed out on a keyboard others there's competence here this is like actual strategy more like some of these movesets are, are more creative than things i've made than things that like pros and top players have made so like several minutes and thought went into it and there's hundreds of them so creativity and the strength and the competitiveness is just unbound and that's why the battle tower is impossible hope you guys enjoy the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching